Good morning, everyone. If I could have your attention, we're about to get started. Good morning. Hey, that worked. All right. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to New Orleans. Welcome to our 2012 workshop and Law Institute. Uh, I have to apologize a little bit. We are running a little late, and that's because two of the regions held their Quick Connect sessions this morning, got a little bit of a late start, and so they were a little late coming in. For those of you who didn't go to the Quick Connect but are going to the, to the session tomorrow, you'll see tomorrow how valuable that is and why we didn't want to cut it short. We have a, a great turnout here. We've got about 220 people. About half of those people are from the jurisdictions in the U.S. and Canada and about half from industry, and that's a little bit more than we had last year, and almost 50 jurisdictions present. And in a time when budgets are tight, travel is tight, and resources are lacking, and it's so much easier to just stay home and do the work in the office, people took the time to join us to help make this a great workshop, and I'm looking forward to the workshop and the institute over the next few days. If you look around, you'll see a large number of white shirts. No, we, we did say business casual, we're not formal, but you'll see that the committee leaders and staff are wearing their white AMBA shirts. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday, the committee leaders met and did an awful lot of work on a number of issues, including what should the committee programs be in the future, what projects are underway, what are near completion, how are we doing, what would we like to take on in fiscal 2013 and beyond, and also what topics should we create and have discussed at our various conferences, including the workshop. And the committee leaders, not just yesterday, obviously, but for many months, have been working to make sure this workshop is relevant to you. And they've also given us a lot of help with other programs as well, including the, uh, the annual conference. Um, I do have a few uh, housekeeping items that if I don't mention, Diane will remind me that I didn't. So I will tell you that we do have free, courtesy of, uh, of AMBA, we have free Wi-Fi here in our workshop. You should have received when you registered a card with some information on it, how to log in. If you're having problems or can't do it, please ask any one of the AMVA staff and we'll be sure to, uh, to help you, help you out. We have about six board members here at the workshop and we're very, very pleased, including the chair of our board who I will introduce in a minute. The board is very engaged in what goes on at the committee level and at the working level, including what happens at the workshop and the institute. We regularly have uh, presentations by our committee leaders to the board so that the board is fully engaged in what is, what is happening, what projects are underway, what projects are coming. It's part of our strategic plan's goal to bring more value to more of the members, to try to get as many members, both industry and jurisdictions, involved in AMVA. Our surveys tell us that when members get involved, when they know that they have something they can obtain from AMVA or they take the time to connect with AMVA or come to a conference, they rate us pretty high. They pretty much get good value. The, ch the chances are the problem we have is getting them to remember to come to AMVA or getting them to realize AMVA's got a solution for that. Please call us. Call one of our subject matter experts, and if you have a chance, you'll certainly see a lot of familiar AMVA faces from the staff this week and a couple of new faces, some folks who've joined us recently. We have a staff of dedicated, passionate uh, experts in a variety of areas. We have some subject matter experts that can help you with anything that, that you want. And if they can't, they'll get you to the right person on staff who can. And if it's something AMVA cannot help you with on the staff side, they'll connect you with another jurisdiction or jurisdictions or even an industry partner who might be able to give you some help. So please, throughout this week and throughout the year, uh, please call on our staff whenever, whenever you, uh, you have the need for them. We're going to hear a little bit about what our three committees are doing this morning, and we're going to hear a little bit from our, our guest host. But first, I want to introduce Mike Robertson, the chair of our board. Mike's working on, I think it's his fifth or sixth badge. He is uh, a great commissioner, a great AMVA board chair, He's just not very good at retirement. Every time he tries to do that, the governor or somebody calls him back and says, I need you back, come on back, here's your next badge. And his latest is running the, the North Carolina DMV and also being chair of AMVA. He's been a great uh, guidance and leadership on the board. He's been a lot of help to me personally, somebody I can bounce ideas off of 
uh, literally any time, day or night. We do sometimes get into a couple of late night Saturday emails, uh, but not too often. So it's my pleasure to introduce somebody that I truly admire, your chair of the board, Mike Robertson. Thanks, Neil. It never ceases to amaze me how he comes up with that stuff because it's just, but thanks anyway. You know, I'm really proud to be your chair this year. <clears throat> it's, um, it, it's truly an honor. And uh, I told the committees yesterday, if you look around you, just turn to your right, turn to your left, and look at what's in this room. I told them yesterday this was the brain trust of the DMV community. I promise you that I could start this morning and I can find an answer to any question that I've got or that I might come up with somewhere in this room. One of the administrators, one of the staff, one of the industry partners, somebody will be able to answer my question or come up with a way to, to find me an answer. But we learn so much from each other and I know that over the next two days there'll be a lot of conversations, there'll be a lot of networking, there'll be a lot of talk and we will find a way to uh, solve our own problems, help our neighbors and colleagues solve their problems. And as you know, my theme has been uh, this year to move to a better tomorrow. And that move has been uh, both through IT systems, it's been through changing programs, it's been through uh, changing some people, putting a fresh look on things. And there's no way to do this any better than to learn what your neighbors done, how they did it, and how you can do it a better way. Uh, it might be a little small changes. You may just be changing staff. You may be changing the way you do your front VR windows. Uh, you may be doing something large, like changing entire computer systems, like I'm trying to do. And guess what? We're going to have a breakout on that tomorrow. You'll be able to discuss it and talk about it. You'll be able to talk about e-titling and a great big computer system to maybe help you do your business better. Uh, the IT technologies in DMV are just always uh, something of a challenge, and all of us work towards one goal of having one person and one driver's license. I'd love to have one car with one registration number plate that you can read. That would be, how about that, JJ? That'd be innovative. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, whatever it is and whatever the problems are, this Anvil community has always faced it head on. That's why we've got these experts up here on these committees, because they're good at what they do. We put together working groups and we put together people who are true experts, and we try to stay ahead of the curve instead of behind it. Uh, I know that all of us are going to learn from each other. Uh, I hope that you get a chance to visit us at our regional conferences. Uh, especially one in Charlotte, that would be Charlotte, North Carolina. Y'all need to keep that on your calendars, keep it in mind. Uh, that'll be in August. Uh, having a little trouble with a racetrack, some of you people. Uh, Lowe's seems to be booked up, but we got a short track we're looking at. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, this workshop is uh, extremely important to the Anvil community because we stay engaged not only with uh, the VR people and the driver's license people, and I'm one of each of those, but we are engaged with the law enforcement side of our community, and we're all one great big uh, happy family. We all combine with our industry partners and we put it together to make it work, and I do appreciate each and every one of you being here. You're what makes it work. You're what contributes to the community, and uh, I learn something new every time I come to one, so enjoy yourselves here in how you say that word, Nick? Nolens? Nolens. Went out last night and I got this great big thing called a sampler platter. I have now tried everything down here that you've got to eat. <laughs> I did not go down there on that other street. <laughs> uh, I did make it down Canal Street and we decided I wouldn't make that other walk. But I've enjoyed it so far. Y'all have a good time. Like I said, the white shirts are either staff or Amber board members or somebody that's supposed to know. If we don't know, we'll find it for you. So have a good time. Mike, Mike, thank you. And, and uh, Mike, is, Mike is right. Uh, industry is here and they're here to help. We have an exhibit 
If you can find some time, make sure you go to the exhibit hall and talk to some of the folks over there. You will see something that really impressed me when I came to ANVA. I did my driver's license renewal a couple of months before I came to ANVA, went into my local DMV in, in Virginia, and found out later from Dave it's pretty much the, most, the busiest one in the state. And I was there about 45 minutes, but I thought it was pretty good. And I waited, got my driver's license, got my photo taken, did the eye test, walked out and said, well, 45 minutes, considering the number of people I saw walk through in that time, that's pretty good productivity. Looked at the license, I go, okay, that's cool, put it in my pocket, well, how difficult was that? And a few months later, I'm at ANVA realizing just how difficult that is, what it takes to create an identity, a license, a document, and uh, a lot of the folks who help make that happen are in the exhibit hall, so please take a chance to, uh, to go over there and see all the technology that, that can be your solutions. It's, uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce uh, someone who I met a couple of months ago, I think it was last fall, at our new administrator's orientation that we held in D.C., uh, Commissioner Nick Gautreau of Louisiana. Uh, a very engaging person. You're in for a, a very nice welcome to, uh, to New Orleans. He has, he has a resume that's, we usually don't read resumes, we tend to be kind of informal at ANVA, but I just have to tell you some of the things he's done and how he's found the time to do them, I don't know. He's a, he's a small business owner. He's also a very, very dedicated public servant. Uh, he was a state senator, so he is, a, he is a legislator. He championed legislation on the issue of women's rights, children's safety, public health, conservation, protection of Louisiana's natural resource and culture some of his uh, things that he's uh, most proud of. Also, he, uh, he's, a, he's a man of not just talk, but action. He uh, personally uh, created a flotilla of civilian water, watercraft, and it later became known as the Cajun Army. And after Katrina, went out and helped rescue people who were caught and stuck in the, in the waters. And the, they later called him the father of the Louisiana solar energy in, uh, industry, and that was by national geographic for what he did post Katrina to help rebuild uh, and promote the use of renewal, renewable energy resources. <clears throat> He's also a sportsman, very involved family-wise, church-wise, etc. There isn't anything he's done. He's, he's almost like our Rhodes Scholar and you're in for a nice welcome from a, from a, good, uh, a good friend of AMVA and a part of our community. Nick, it's all yours. Well, first of all, I want to start off as uh, I want to be like Mike. Everybody knows that commercial, so I want to be like you, Mike, one day, all right? And Mike said he tried everything. I don't think he tried everything here in New Orleans. Uh, I don't know if you had barbecue possum. I've had possum before. You had possum before, okay. Not barbecue. Not barbecue. Okay, well, barbecue possum and uh, barbecue gar roast. You need to try that. Garfish. How many of y'all eat garfish before? Anybody? Nobody. All right. Well, okay. So uh, Neil talked about being dedicated and passionate, and, and I have to admit, I've, I've got to talk about somebody who's dedicated and passionate. Where's Keith Fowler? Is he here? Stand up, Keith, if we can see you when you stand up. Stand up. There's Keith. Talk about dedicated and passionate. I feel, <laughs> there we go. That's what I like to see. We talked about earlier today, uh, you were talking about Quick, Neck, Quick Connect, right? And y'all were talking about how our Quick Link, was it Quick Link or Quick Connect? Quick Connect. And uh, I was, he said they were running over us. I said, well, I wonder if Keith Fowler was in there and talking to him because he's the only guy I know that talks more than I do. <laughs> so some of y'all are going to get to hear Keith talk, but uh, he's a great guy and does a lot uh, for our, our organization. I want to welcome you, first of all, here to the AMBA workshop. I think it's a great opportunity for us to showcase a city who not too long ago was devastated. And at this time, I'd ask everybody to close your eyes right now. Just close your eyes and keep them closed, and I'm going to ask you what you see. And I imagine some of y'all are going to say you see darkness, you see black. Basically, you see despair. Now open your eyes. And now you see something that's clear. It's clarity. That's how far we've come in New Orleans. That's how far we've come in, in Louisiana. We have a governor who believes in leading. We have a governor who believes you don't have to do the most popular thing. Just do the right thing. We also have a colonel of our organization, the Department of Public Safety, who believes in helping people, taking care of people. Colonel Edmondson is a great leader for the department. I can reassure you, when I was here during Hurricane Katrina, for those six or seven days I left home, my wife was six months pregnant. And I can remember at times when my wife would say, 
when are you going to stay home? You, you keep going. She says, you know, she said, I heard that there were shots on television. Somebody got killed. There's people shooting over a bridge. All those things you heard. And so I looked at her and I told her, and like I said, she was six months pregnant. And uh, I would get home at one o'clock in the morning and I would leave at four o'clock in the morning. So I drive back from New Orleans every day all the way to South Louisiana, which is about a two hour drive. And I told her, I said, baby, what would happen if we were flooded? What would you want done? She said, I'd want somebody just like you or someone helping us rescue people, whatever it takes. And so I continue to do that. And I will tell you, it's ironic because six weeks later, on September 23rd, Hurricane Rita devastated my entire district, the southern portion of my district. Some people had to be rescued, not very many, because we were very fortunate we had learned from Katrina. And in the past, our organization of Department of Public Safety, Wildlife and Fisheries, local police, sheriff's departments were able to get people to move up north or to move out of harm's way. But I will tell you, it's funny how when you lead and you lead by example, it comes back twofold for you. Because I will tell you, as soon as that storm was there, guess who was there? Department of Public Safety, Wildlife and Fisheries. All law enforcement was there. And I have to honestly say, nobody died in that storm in Rita. We were proud of that. However, in Hurricane Katrina, many have. Now, you get to wander off into Bourbon Street, right? How, how interesting is Bourbon Street? You look at it, the culture's different. But one thing I think you'll learn is that the people of South Louisiana are friendly. The people of Louisiana are friendly. More importantly, those margaritas, somebody said yes, hurricanes. How many of y'all had a hurricane from Pat O'Brien's? They're pretty friendly, aren't they? And for some of y'all, I guess when y'all were at the bar or you were at the restaurant and you see somebody next to you and after you drank a couple of those, you probably even got friendlier, right? So what I'll tell you is that we have a unique culture here in Louisiana. One thing I can tell you is the role that Department of Public Safety and the AMA community played in our success from the hurricane is tremendous. It's something that will never be forgotten. Who's here from Canada? I want to tell you, you probably don't know this, some of you may, some of you not, but the Canadian Mounties actually came down to Louisiana, I was able to meet some of them, came, drove all the way down, may I add, not flew, but drove down to Louisiana to help rescue people. My hats go off to you. We appreciate it. For other, you, other people in Region 2 or from other states, people from all over came to help. This is what America's about. This is what AMBA's about, is helping people. And for that, we're very grateful. One thing I can tell you is that when you close your eyes earlier and you open them, to me, that's what success is about. When you open your eyes and you see something come clear and you see a vision come straight forward that's beautiful. Neil talks about how AMBA is such a great community. That is true. He said, dedicated and passionate, that's what I say to our Amber. All the Amber people here, I will tell you, you're the best resource. And when you said that, Mike, that's not a question that nobody can answer here, that's the truth. That's how dedicated people are here. That's the knowledge that you have. I will also tell you that, and I, I think it's, how many of y'all for, uh, let's say, February, uh, got flowers. Any of y'all got flowers for February? Who got flowers? Raise your hand. Come on now. All got flowers. Jill, you got flowers back there? One of my staff members got flowers. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about uh, my son. My son decides he's going to go to school, and he brings a bouquet of flowers, uh, roses, actually, to be quite honest with you, to uh, his girlfriend. And so he brings his flowers to his girlfriend, and for some reason, he told me that. He didn't tell his mom, but then his mom found out that her son brought roses to a young lady at school. And so she was very upset. And so he came back and said, hey, mom was upset about buying the roses. He says, well, son, there's the only thing I can tell you about her being upset. Let me give you a little bit of advice. You know, every day you walk to school, and you notice that graveyard? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, I'll tell you what. The only thing you did wrong was when you walk by that graveyard, 
to save yourself a little bit of money, you should have went grab some of those roses and brought them to your skin. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought y'all would find that enlightening, but <laughs> um, I'd like to leave y'all with a couple things, and one will be a joke probably last, but the uh, something that you may want to write down, you may not. How many of y'all like Vince Labordi? Vince Labordi, to me, uh, is a, a leader. He was a coach. But more importantly, he was a compassionate man who believed in helping people and helping people become successful. And I tell my staff all the time, it's not about becoming successful. It's about the value that you bring to your community. If people could once say, you know, everybody says they want to be successful. You know what? I take the approach. I want to see what value I can bring to my community. And I'm going to give you one little um, quote, and I think it fits AMVA. It fits the Department of Motor Vehicles, and it fits public safety. Individual commitment to a group effort. That is what makes a team work, a company work, a society work, a civilization work. And I put a little in, and this is going to be part of Nick Gotro's, the Department of Public Safety work. Think about that. Individual commitment. See, not too often you talk about a team and individual individuals, but all in this entire code he has, really, it's an individual commitment to each other that makes that team. And that's where we are today. And that's where we're going to continue to be successful under the leadership of our organization under AMBA. AMBA. Um, so now, for some of y'all, I know y'all went to the bars. So I figure, you know, Neil, I just want to let you know, Somebody said they didn't have any pictures. I said, well, Jerry's here. He's got the camera, right? He's always got the camera. So just to let you know, uh, and Keith said, um, was it um, early, he said that some guy said, hey, you got some pictures? He said, no, I don't have pictures. But I said, well, Keith, I'll tell you what. I think we could get you some pictures. There's about a camera in every bar room. So just be careful what you're doing there, right? <laughs> so uh, Keith, we'll get some pictures. Uh, what was the name of that bar you in? <laughs> <laughs> So um, just to let everybody know, Neil went out last night, and so he decided to go bar hopping. Neil, I mean, he looks pretty good for uh, drinking a couple martinis, right? Martinis? It was, it was martinis, right? So anyhow, so Neil uh, walked into the bar, and um, he was leading an alligator. Can you imagine Neil had an alligator? He was leading an alligator on a leash, all right? And he asked the bartender, he said, do you serve lawyers here? Sure do said the bartender. Good, replied to Neil. I said, good. He said, give me a beer, and I'll have a lawyer for my alligator. <laughs> so we know Neil likes alligators. And one thing I wanted to tell you about the alligator deal is that when you come to South Louisiana and you go to Bourbon Street, you definitely may see an alligator after you have a few drinks. And you may even think it's moving. So. On behalf of the state of Louisiana, Governor Jindal, Colonel Edmondson, our Colonel of State Police, and also the Secretary for Public Safety Services, we welcome you to Louisiana, but not before we appreciate some people in this audience. How many of y'all veterans? Raise your hand. Please stand up if you don't mind. I know you may not want to, but please stand. It's important. To the veterans of this country, to the soldiers who continue to fight, y'all gave me an opportunity. The American Legion gave me an opportunity to learn about government. And without that opportunity, I wouldn't be sitting here where I am today. So to you, the freedom of speech, that flag that you fought from, for, for, I have five younger children. I appreciate what you did for our country, and I appreciate what the current soldiers are continuing to do for our country. We live in the best country in the world. Freedom of speech, remember it. It's very important. Thank you for having me today, and thank you all for being part of this revitalization of this beautiful city, the city of New Orleans. I hope you enjoy yourself, and once again, thanks. Thank you, Nick. The alligator and I will be on Canal Street tonight instead. 
let me tell you, it's not easy house training an alligator, but somehow we, somehow we got it done. And Nick, thank you, and thank you for being part of, of ANVA. I'm going to turn it over now to, uh, to Ian Grossman. He's our Vice President of Member Services and Public Affairs, and he's going to give us a presentation on how you, the members of ANVA, can benefit from being part of our community. So, Ian, it is, uh, it is all yours. Thank you, Neil. Uh, I'm actually going to call uh, an audible here uh, because we are running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, we're going to jump ahead for a moment and then come back if we have time. So uh, what my presentation was generally about, many of you know about AMVA. You know of AMVA. You've used a piece of AMVA. But what we've discovered time and time again, whether at the new administrator's orientation or a committee meeting back in the fall, when we walk through all of the member tools that we have available for you to access, everybody knows a piece of the puzzle, but there's always something. Someone goes, oh, I didn't know you did that. That would have been really helpful. I just went through an RFP. I wish I had known that you could help me with that. Or we were, had that issue, I didn't think to call to AMVA. We will hopefully find time either before we break from this session or another session throughout the conference to come back and, re come back and revisit that presentation. However, uh, because so much of what we do in terms of the off-the-shelf deliverables that we want to provide to the members come out of the work that the three standing committees do, I want to make sure that they have adequate time this morning to walk you through their projects. Now, I will tell you that in the town halls later in the workshop, they will dive into greater detail on the different groups. Some of the groups are standalone sessions, but since all of those content areas are being covered in concurrent sessions, it's especially important that when we're all together as a group, everybody can get that vision across the board of the three standing committees, what, what they are working on. So I think with that preamble, I've hopefully, hopefully given Eric enough warning to jump ahead to the driver committee presentation. And as you can see how many slides he's skipping through, you can see why I'm calling the audible to skip ahead. <laughs> And I will uh, hand it over to Chrissy Neiser. Chrissy is from Maryland and is our chair of the Driver Standing Committee. Chrissy. Thanks, Ian. Good morning, everybody. As Ian said, my name is Chrissy Neiser. I'm a deputy administrator at Maryland and uh, glad to be with you here today to present some of the activities of the Drivers Committee. Um, as you can see, this is a list of committee members. I didn't warn folks that I was going to do this, but could all the committee members and our two board advisors please stand for a minute just so everybody can see who you are. Um, the committee members have done a great job this year, and I just want to thank them for all their efforts, and I also want everybody in the audience to know who they are, so if you have a question about what's going on in terms of the driver committee, uh, you know who to go to. So thank you for all your work this year. I appreciate it. Okay, for those of you who, not, who aren't very uh, familiar with the committee activities, with the driver committee in particular, most of our activities are funded through grants, either through the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration or the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And so I'm going to go through some of those activities. Uh, kind of goes back to Ian's point of the services and the products that AMBA has available. We want to make sure that you're aware of them and uh, that you're utilizing the great resources that are out there. Uh, you can see the first one is the foreign national driving credentials that were funded through NHTSA. This has been completed as of September and was sent out to the jurisdictions. So your law enforcement entities should have this information in terms of how to best uh, deal with an individual with a foreign driver's license credential and how to manage a traffic stop if they stop somebody with that type of license. Uh, the next area is the comparative data. This was the first step of the process. We've been talking about um, comparative uh, data for a few years now. 
Uh, the FMCSA grant expired at the end of last year. And basically the goal of that, we all do surveys quite frequently and provide information in terms of what our jurisdictions are doing. This is a way to put all that data in one place so that you can go there if you need information about what other jurisdictions are doing and you can find out information on a wide variety of topics. It's trying to really compile that together all in one place. Um, so we do have, a, you'll see in the next slide, a NHTSA grant that follows up on that. And then the driver record data translation, again, this was completed at the end of December, and this was trying to identify best practices that you can use with the judiciary um, to try to make it easier for them to un understand driving records and effectively use them as part of the judicial process. Okay, here's some of our NHTSA-funded activities. Uh, the Motorcycle Operators Manual, um, the final comments have now been incorporated into the knowledge test item pool and we did receive approval from NHTSA to begin the development of the three wheel vehicle item pool as well. We know that's been an issue for a lot of jurisdictions and we are working with Georgia on a pilot uh, for this effort. Here's a second phase of the comparative data um, allowing us to get 23 jurisdictions online which is great. There is grant funding available if you're interested in bringing your jurisdiction online and you have not yet done that and we will have more information at the town hall if you'd like to find out more about that. The NDR work group. This is a new work group that was just created um, under the purview of, of AMBA. This is a three year effort um, that's going to be taking place to look at some of the concerns that exist within the NDR, some of the things that jurisdictions have brought up over the last few years, things like clean file process, folks sending um, non-highway safety related uh, information through the NDR and that preventing somebody from getting a license in your jurisdiction. Uh, some of the, the issues in terms of point of retention, things that happened many years ago and are showing up in the system. So it's real important that we get feedback from the jurisdictions as we move forward with this working group. Uh, look for a survey or a information request to be coming out soon in terms of what um, your key issues are as we move forward with this effort. We want to know up front if there are things that you're concerned about um, or if there are things that would cause major impact for you. That's why it's a three-year effort. We recognize it's going to take time to get uh, some of these recommendations made and then obviously will be presented to NHTSA uh, to move forward. The DLA support, this is something that has been um, put on the back burner because of Real ID obviously has been a focus and this hasn't been uh, quite as much on the forefront, so we did submit a request to NHTSA to extend that deadline to 2014. The International Driver Examiner Certification, the board met at the end of last year. They incorporated some new information, including the ICE video, added customer service delivery and road test intervention to the curriculum, and uh, they're updating them for release in spring of this year. Um, they also approved the creation of a video in terms of how to conduct a basic driving test that hopefully will be of use to you. CDL Train the Trainer, you can see some of the activities that are going to be coming up in April in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and then also in September, we've got some additional activities as well. The 2012 CDL Coordinator Meeting, I know this is something that folks look forward to every year. There will be funding for four jurisdictional representatives, two from the business area and two from the IT side. Um, some updates we actually just got yesterday to this. It won't be in September of this year. We're looking probably early, beginning uh, January possibly of next year, but that's uh, look for that to be coming out soon and more information. Motorcycle GDL Best Practices Working Group. Um, this has been approved by the steering committee. Again, it's a new working group that we've move forward with and uh, we were postponing doing this until we got the NHTSA approved uh, motorcycle operators manual. Now that we have that we can move forward and um, we're going to be scheduling the working group meeting soon on that. The external fraud working group, this is actually something that is not uh, sponsored by just one committee. It's such an important effort and it crosses all the lines. It is actually jointly sponsored by all three committees. Many of you, I'm sure, are aware of the internal fraud work group uh, that convened a few years ago and the good work they put out in terms of the guidelines um, for internal fraud. Well, this is obviously the extension of that as we look at external fraud and how that impacts us at the uh, DMV world. 
So you can see there was a solicitation for volunteers. There was a great response from it. Clearly it's a major issue for everybody based on the uh, large volume of response. There is a meeting planned in July for that and a uh, survey requesting information from the jurisdictions in terms of what they're doing. The Move magazine that you got when you checked in has some good information in terms of what jurisdictions are doing today that uh, you might find interesting. There has been an FNCSA grant funding requested and obviously that, um, if we receive that, then hopefully that'll allow uh, the group to grow in size and get more feedback from folks. Okay, with that I'd just like to thank you and remind you about the town hall that's gonna be on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. We'd be happy to answer additional questions then and get in more detail or please feel free to see any of the driver committee members uh, at any time during the conference. Thank you. I will uh, thank you, Chrissy. Uh, and though I uh, am a resident of Maryland, I will never uh, leave the opportunity to introduce somebody from Vermont. Uh, and that's because it was uh, when I was in Vermont working for the Agency of Transportation a number of years ago where the DMV resides that uh, I first learned about AMFA, not knowing years later I would be here part of the staff. I was working for the Secretary of Transportation and a wonderful woman who I know a lot of you uh, know and remember Bonnie Rutledge uh, came up to me and said, hey, I'm about to uh, be chair in a couple of years of this group called AMVA. Will you help me with uh, some odds and ends? And that was my first introduction to AMVA. So my Vermont AMVA connection always stays with me. And that's why I will never pass up the opportunity to welcome somebody from Vermont to the podium. Denise Kingsbury, the chair of the Enforcement Standing Committee. Good morning. Um, my name is Denise Kingsbury. I'm from the Vermont Department of Motor Vehicles and I'm from the Enforcement and Safety Unit and the Chair of the Enforcement Committee. Um, I'd like to take this time to just read the um, mission statement from the Enforcement Committee because we truly use this guide um, for our activities of our committee and that's to inspire to inspire collaboration between law enforcement and driver motor vehicle administrators to improve highway and public safety. The Rural Road Work Zone Safety Working Group that was completed September 2011. The deliverable was 18 wheels and busted training video. Um, to see the video and learn much more at the 18 Wheels and Busted from apprehension to prosecution session. Um, there, are, there were initially 20,000 copies that were made. 17,000 copies have been sent out and there are extra copies available here. So if anyone would like a copy, please see Brian. The license plate reader working group the status of this is in progress, it's on time, and the completion date is um, October 2012. This was created in March of 2011. It's funded by Customs and Border Protection. The first deliverable, a matrix identifying by jurisdiction the use of stacked letters, non-alphanumeric characters, and other unique license plate characteristics. This was ahead of schedule, it was completed February 2012, and this is also posted on the AMBA website. Deliverable number two is a best practice guide for improving automated license plate reader effectiveness through uniform license plate design and manufacture. This is in the final review process, and if you'd like to learn more, it's gonna um, please attend the afternoon session when USA plate. The enforcement, I'm sorry, suspended and revoked working group. Um, the status of this is, is it's in progress, on time, and completion is set for August 2012. It was created in 2004. It's funded by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. First deliverable is the best alternative practices document. It's in the final review process. Deliverable number two, model legislation. Um, 
completed will be included in the best practice appendices. A detailed update will be provided during the law enforcement town hall. Registration, insurance card standardization working group. This is new, it was created in 20. I'm not gonna go through the list of names for the committee members, um, but I would like to acknowledge the committee members if they could please stand. Thank you. Um, we have. We have an engaged group of committee members who actively participate and I'm very grateful for them. Thank you. Just to know, I believe both the uh, 18 wheels and busted deliverable as well as the uh, foreign nationals credentials card, we also have copies at the AMVA booth. Uh, that you can you can grab uh, certainly we can help you get to the links online so you can download them uh, at home as well particularly the resource card that you can take a look at uh, a lot of that information is at the booth as well as information about a number of these deliverable products you'll see on the either the scrolling screen or uh, any of the AMFA staff members can give you more information about that as well thank you Denise uh, and next up is Janet Dolan from Pennsylvania our chair of the vehicle standing committee good. I like that. I am Janet Dolan, like you said, from Pennsylvania, uh, chair of the Vehicle Standing Committee. Uh, the first topic I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is e-tiling. We are very excited about this. We are kind of out front instead of behind catching up on this uh, working group. I'm proud to say that this team has a proof of concept. We will pre be presenting this proof of concept to the board in April and uh, based on their approval which I hope they will I'm putting a plug in Mike you hear me um, that uh, we will be able to start piloting this uh, if you want to learn more I encourage you to go to the writing the title wave the next one is about the unconventional vehicles working group this committee has been since 2005 they've done several things I've listed up here some of the previous deliverables that were done as you know we all change positions and sometimes you forget about them so I just thought this would be a good refresher the first deliverable was done in 2007 and as you can see it's based on the tying and registration of new motorcycles and it's actually out there on the other website if you're like some of us you forget what you put out there on the website and you need a refresher course of you should go look for that out there the second deliverable is the tiling and registration of mini trucks and that was completed in 2011 and that too is posted on the AMVA website their new project they're working on is the best practice guide for regulating and registering rebuilt and reconstructed specially constructed and rebodied vehicles the chair of the committee will be here talking at a session that we're calling emerging vehicle issues so if you have any specific questions on those types of things I encourage you all to attend that the next one is the three vehicle working group I actually saw some of a three vehicle motorcycle here in Louisiana sport coupe Louisiana <laughs> so uh, they have them in Maryland uh, and there's difference of opinion when we go to do these in different states on the highway safety issue there's just a lot so this this committee is just getting started um, they've gone through a little transition so they're working hard on moving this uh, it's a little bit of a touchy subject matter forward so um, I look forward to their deliverable at the end the next group this is really a new group. This is the privacy of email and telephone numbers. As you know, the more data we collect, the more issues that brings to the table as to who we can release it to. 
And being in the DMV, all of us, you know, everyone wants our data. Um, I don't know why, but they do. So, and tons of it. So uh, this group is uh, going to get together here shortly. And uh, we hope to start in the summer to kind of do a best practice of how it relates to the privacy of the email and telephone addresses. So look forward to that coming out. The next group I'd like to talk to you about is Navitas. This, too, is a new group. Um, it's on the heels of, as states are moving into Navitas, as always, the first rung was you get in, you get up, you get running, and then as you learn more, you need to now address some business issues, some policy decisions that, you know, you just didn't get your hands around as you were getting up and getting involved in Navitas. Um, this group is in the pr process of getting a charter. Uh, we are selecting nominees as they come in, and we hope to have our first meeting come the summer. So think about if you have Navitas business questions. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the vehicle uh, town hall meeting. Come with those things. We'll get the working group a jump start with a list. So um, I'm open to all that. Last but not least is all the committee members um, from the vehicle. I'd ask you all to stand. I know you guys are not shy. If you have any vehicle questions or anything, uh, feel free to answer or ask any of us, stop us. If we don't know the answer, we'll find out. Thank you. Welcome. Have a good time. So lucky you, we have 15 minutes. And since uh, we, we started late, it's a shorter session anyway, we'll, we'll go back and what we'll do is uh, I'll do a chunk of what I was going to do in my presentation and if we don't get through all of it, uh, I've already been talking to staff. There's some other opportunities throughout the today and tomorrow where we'll be able to, we'll make it a chapter book and we'll visit, visit each in chunks. So Eric, if I could ask you again to scroll back. We are nimble and flexible. Great. So again, the idea is that there's a lot of stuff out there that's available to AMVA members. And we want to make sure as a baseline that there's some understanding of what, what we can do for you. Uh, I've given this presentation a, a couple of times now, both at the new administrators orientation at our headquarters as well as our fall committee meeting, and it was Again, it was that wonderful feedback that we got from those members that said, you know, even those of, those of us that have been around a few years, they come to me and say, I've been in AMVA 10, 15 years, and there was something in there I didn't know you did. So it's good to assume zero, and uh, I hope for everyone in here, there'll be at least that one thing that said, huh, I didn't know you did that. Because, yeah, we do that. So Neil mentioned earlier our strategic plan. And some of you may have heard that last spring, the board of directors adopted a new strategic plan for the operating organization that is AMVA. And by the operating organization, I mean it's the strategic plan of those of us who are headquartered out of Arlington, or working remotely, uh, that are delivering and trying to service you to be able to fulfill your missions back home in the jurisdiction. And for us to be able to do that, to deliver our mission of supporting you, we try to put together a comprehensive suite of member solutions that are at your fingertips. We hear over and over again that one of the most valuable things AMVA provides is the ability to get together in forums just like this to talk to each other, to learn from your colleagues, to make personal connections with someone in a neighboring jurisdiction uh, or across on the other side of the country so that when you have an issue, there's a face and a name on the other end of that telephone that is going to take that call all the quicker or you can learn from each other on how best to do something. So in many ways at the heart of the organization is being able to deliver these opportunities for you. Of course, here we are at the Workshop and Law Institute. 
Many of you, of course, know about the regional conferences that happen uh, mostly in the spring. Of course, Region 3 does their information exchange in the fall. And as, uh, as Mike alluded to earlier, we have our, our annual conference coming up in August in Charlotte. And we've instituted our webinar series. A couple years ago, we started rolling out webinars. It's another way when you, you can't travel or you can't bring as many staff to these events as you'd like to. It's a wonderful way to virtually interact and still share the knowledge and do the information gathering that would happen at a networking opportunity. And it was also alluded to earlier that we have a lot of subject matter experts available to help you. Uh, and I want to be very explicit about who these people are and that they are available to you um, virtually 24-7, whether they uh, want me to say that or not. Uh, these are, they're, they're wonderful people who have years of experience in these areas. And if you don't know the answer as to on one of these contact areas, send an email, pick up the phone, uh, they are there to help. And I can guarantee you they will, they will find the answer uh, to your questions. And um, many of them are here today with the exception of uh, Jeff and Karen. Uh, the other five that are up there are, are with us and I would encourage you to find the chance to meet them and chat with them. So the other thing is when you're not sure which one of them to call, you don't know where to turn, but you know you have an issue and you think Amber might have the answer, well, guess what? We have a solution there, too. If the, there we go. Okay. Most of you probably know these two individuals. And if you're in Regions 1 and 2, give Fred a call. If you're in Region 3 and 4, give Sheila a call. I guarantee you, if they don't know the answer, which often they do, they will 100% know who does know the answer and will get you in contact, whether it's one of the subject matter experts or whether it's a technical question on the, the IT side and get someone from that side of the house, they will find you the answer. And I encourage you, before you spend the time on your own trying to track it down, just reach out to them. They are super fast about getting back to people. It's remarkable. So a lot of you think about this when you think of AMBA. You think about SIDLIS. You think about the technology behind being able to run your day-to-day -day business. It's a crucially important platform and a fundamental part of what we do to be able to provide you the backbone of your, your operations. And not being an IT guy, I am not going to try to dissect the slide for you, but nevertheless, it gives you that picture of the technology hub to connect you and bring you together. And there are a number of presentations throughout today and tomorrow that talks about not only how the different pieces work, but some of the pieces we're trying to expand and build upon to bring further efficiencies and to allow you to go that much further in delivering your missions back home. We've, you've heard from the three standing committees. Uh, it's the core of what we do in the best practices area. We are making a very proactive attempt to try to make sure that the many groups and committees that you may be involved with or connected to on AMVA are connected to these three standing committees. And I think you heard a lot of that already this morning. And I will uh, move through these really quickly because you've heard about some of them. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the best practices, but again, it gives you the flavor of everything that's out there and available to you uh, in terms of ways we want to make it easier for you to do your business. These issues don't come up just because somebody in headquarters said, oh, it would be fun to write a best practice on X, Y, and Z. We've heard from you that these are the challenges you have. So we convene members together to deliver a solution that will help ease your pain, to use the Field of Dreams reference. And so again, you've heard, you've heard a lot about a lot of these. We are excited to see the, the use that they're getting and the response, and we want to make sure we continue to deliver best practices and other solutions that are, that are going to that are going to help you. <laughs>
that's the trailer. <laughs> that's the tease. So you can go to the 18 Wheels and Buses session, learn more, get a copy of the full-length video. Uh, I show it for two reasons. One is to get those of you interested and excited about it, but two, to show that we're trying to do what we can to vary the way we're delivering the content. There used to be a time where a best practice equaled a Microsoft Word document that you could you would download and read and print out. And though text is not going away, we are doing everything we can to try to vary the media, uh, use more multimedia opportunities, and deliver things in an interactive, dynamic way that makes it engaging and easier for you to access and put into utilization. Many of you might know about this. Uh, every year, AMVA, through our Car Design Standards Committee, puts out a design standard for the driver's license and ID card. Uh, it is important to understand two things about the car design standard. One is it's created for the members by the members. There's a, me a member committee that makes the decisions what should be in the design standard. It's obviously an optional standard. There is no mandate or legislation that says you must follow the AMVA standard. But what it is is it's a group of members who collectively deliberate to decide at any given time, it's the best way to design a license. And the key is that at any given time. The reason why we update the standard every year is not because the committee thinks every year you're going to go and redesign your card, not practical, not logical, you know, not going to happen, but at any given time, one of you might be redesigning your card. And at that time, where you might be looking at redesigning your card, we want you to know that the best possible way to do it is out there and you can look to, to follow it and take as much of it or as little as of it that works for you. But it's the best practice that's out there at that snap point in time. Now that's the front end on how to design the standard, how to design the card. Well, how do you know how well you did? Well, we have something on the back end too, our courtesy verification program. This is a program where if you're designing, redesigning the card, you send us the sample of the new card. And we, through a partnership with IntelliJack Mobilisa, will review the card and let you know how it stacks up against the design standard. This is something that is included in your membership fees, in your dues. You pay dues every year for Amphor to be a member. This is one of the services that we deliver to you at no additional cost as part of being a member of Amphor. And again, the report back on how you did through the verification program is information that you can decide what you want to do with. Meaning, okay, we hit these pieces of the standard, that's great, we didn't hit these pieces of the standard based on the report. You could then decide whether you want to change or not. You could say, all right, well, we didn't meet that part of the Amphis standard, but we know that and we accept that and we're going to move on. Or you could say, wow, I thought we, we had that one and now we're seeing that we didn't, how do we bridge that gap? It's just another piece of information so that you can make the best possible decision at that point in time. And again, no additional fee. You just send us in the samples and we process it for you. And if you haven't seen it already, uh, our, our chair did a uh, wonderful video that's on our YouTube site that could tell you a little bit more about it. And we have just recently submitted our new credential to AMVA for verification. Now, what the verification does, it looks at all of your uh, security features, and some of those are public, some of them aren't, but it lets the jurisdiction or agency know how you rate, whether you meet the uh, Department of Homeland Security standards. Um, I mean, it, it may be as simple as the uh, ultraviolet that's checked by TSA when you go through a, the line at the airport or it may be the very uh, secure features that all of us have on our credentials, but it tells you how good it is. Yes. It's free. Hamble does it free of charge. You can submit your credential. Uh, staff and a, uh, a private forensics company uh, reviews the card at no cost. That same thing is free. And it's a professional verification uh, AMVA obviously has no, uh, no stake in whether you're acquiring a vendor or how you're doing it, but it does tell the jurisdiction that their card 
passes the federal standards and that it is not or that it won't be easy to duplicate. Again, that's the teaser. See the full length video on AMVA's YouTube channel. Uh, two, two notes about that. One, again, it's a way we're trying to find new ways to deliver information than the traditional channels to you. And two, you might notice the video is a little bit grainier than you'd expect a video to be. That's because we use Skype. We used Skype, Mike sat in his office, we Skyped with him, he recorded it, and we, we put it up. It wasn't a, didn't have to do any kind of fancy video shoot, just you know, free online uh, ability to be able to record, post, and get information back, back to the members. So that's a good chapter break for us to put this on, on pause, uh, almost like a little teaser in and of itself, more to come.